Hi, I'm going to demo this power supply that I built. It is assembled inside of a piece of uh, one and a half inch aluminum tubing. The idea is I can take it on my bench and I can set it back there and it'll be nice and uh, out of the way. Uh, it's got a few controls on it so there is uh, a meter here that will display the amps. There is an on off switch and there is a potentiometer that will adjust the current. Now I've designed this as a fixed 5 voltage supply because I already have numerous adjustable supplies. I don't need any of those but it's nice to have an extra 5 volts on the bench. Um, so let's try it out. Plug it in, turn it on. Uh, the first thing we'll see is that with no load it still displays uh, 3 milliamps. It seems like there's uh, about that much noise in the circuit that it's always off by about uh, 3 milliamps. Maybe I could trim that up with a trimmer resistor someplace. Um, I put this handy switch in here so that I can uh, test the current limit. So for example you pull this in, if you want to set your current limit to 500 milliamps, there now the current limit is adjusted to 500 milliamps, you can flip the switch off and now we've got current that we can use to uh, to run whatever load we want on these two binding posts. Uh, the, the bulb is designed so that it will light up when the current limit is on. Um, it kind of misses it by a little bit so it'll, it'll turn on maybe about 10% 10% after the current limit engages. Hi, I'm going to walk through this power supply project I built. The actual picture of the power supply down here the circuit board. Um, so starting with the the simplest version of it and then I will get into more complicated and add the current limiting feature and the adjustable voltage feature. But let's start with a simple LM2576-5. That is an adjustable uh, voltage regulator. There's a tube of them here. They're a 5 pin uh, TO220-5 device. There's one, two, three, four, five pins going in and out of it. It's a relatively simple uh, chip to use to get a 5 volt power supply. And let's look at the circuit. So, your power comes in over here. I think you can have up to uh, 40 volts for uh, the low voltage version or up to 60 volts for a special high voltage version. So, let's assume this is the lower voltage variant. Up to 40 volts in. You've got a capacitor here that filters the input. Um, you've got a ground here. You've got this uh, signal here turns the regulator on and off. We'll ground it all the time so it's always on. Then over here, the power comes out. You've got a diode and an inductor. This is a called a uh, buck converter. It's a switch mode power supply. It works at, I think, around 50 kilohertz. And it switches a very high frequency signal out here to this... Uh, diode and inductor which will generate the appropriate voltage in the capacitor. Now how it knows what the right voltage is and how to modulate this uh, high frequency signal here is by this uh, feedback pin. So this feedback pin on the 5 volt variant it will do whatever it needs to do on the output in order to get 5 volts on the feedback pin. So if we look inside of the data sheet on this chip We'll find that uh, the 5 volt variant really has two resistors built into the chip. It's a resistor there and a resistor there. I think this one is around 1K and this one is like uh, 4 point something or 5 point something. But these two resistors form a voltage divider which takes the 5 volt uh, input signal and brings it down to 1.2 volts. So what the chip is really doing is it is uh, doing whatever it needs to do to make this value in here 1.2 volts by adjusting the frequency on that pin out there. Now if we want to use the adjustable version of the regulator 2576-ADJ what they do there is they get rid of this resistor and they get rid of that resistor so now what it is is a 1.2 volt regulator. Well that isn't really useful so what you do is out here you put in your own resistor 
there, and your own resistor here, to ground. So by choosing these two resistors, you can set up the voltage divider to whatever you want. So if you wanted a 12 volt regulator, you just pick the appropriate resistors to make your voltage divider such that when 12 volts comes in here, 1.2 volts is there. So what we can do is we can take this out, take that out, we can put a potentiometer in there. Now we have an adjustable uh, switching buck converter. So you can set this wherever you want. So for the next step, I'd like to add current limiting to this power supply. The first step to get current limiting is going to be to measure the current. Come over to this side. So what we can do is we can put a resistor here. And if it is a one ohm resistor, and then we can measure these two points, A and B. We know that by Ohm's law, one amp across one ohm will be one volt. So if the, the difference between these two pins is one volt, then that means one amp is passing out the output. If it was a difference between these two pins was 0.1 volts, then it would mean 100 milliamps is going through the output. Okay, so we were able to measure a differential current across here to here that will give us the amps that are, uh, that are being used by our supply. But it's not really useful to take these measurements directly because this one here will be, you know, like if we were doing 100 milliamps, this would be 4.9 volts, this would be 5 volts, you know, who wants to work around 4.9 and 5? So what we can do is we can use an op amp configured as a differential amplifier to read this differential signal and give us a... Uh, a nice output from 0 to 1 volt. So these resistors here, 1, 2, 3, 4, they all need to be equal. And in my reference design, I used 100K for all four of those. I used a TL272 op amp. And the way this thing is configured, whatever the difference is between this part and this part comes out over here. So if we have 1 volt difference, we'll get 1 volt difference. And because we're using this 1 ohm resistor, uh, 0 to 1 volt on the output of this op amp is 0 to 1 amp. So now we are able to measure how much uh, current is being consumed by our supply. We can actually, if we wanted to, stick a digital panel meter at that point and that would tell us how much current is being consumed. So that is exactly what I did when I actually built the thing. There is the digital panel meter which corresponds to that block. So now we have an adjustable power supply and we have a way of measuring the current that it is being consumed by that power supply. Now what we need to do is to have some way to take this signal and control that output. So what we've done is we've added a second op amp down here. This second op amp is actually part of the same TLC272 chip as the first op amp. The chip includes two. So we've taken the first one and we've taken its output and we've hooked it to the plus side of the second one. And then we, for the minus side of the second one, we have uh, added a potentiometer that goes from plus one volt to ground. So this op amp has two different zero to one volt signals. One is this potentiometer, which will be a dial that we can turn with our hand, right there. And the other zero to one volt signal is coming from this op amp, which is coming all the way up there from that sense resistor. So what this op amp is going to do, it's going to work kind of like a comparator. Based on whichever signal of these two is higher, it's going to output a voltage here. So if the plus side is higher than the minus side, then the op amp is going to go positive. 
If the plus side is lower than the negative side, then the op amp is going to go negative. So what this allows us to do is we can set this to our current limit, and then by measuring the current on the other side, this will become something that tells us whether we are above or below what we want to be. So what this thing is going to do is overcurrent, then it's going to go positive, under, current, it's going to go negative. And by negative, we actually mean ground since we're using a single supply op amp. Okay, so we're going to want to, now the next step is we're going to use this op amp to control this regulator. So what we've done is we've added this diode, we've taken the output of the op amp through the diode up to the feedback pin. Now recall the way this regulator worked. It sensed the feedback pin and what it did was it modulated the high frequency driving this inductor to whatever it needed to do to make that feedback pin read 1.2 volts. So if we drive that feedback pin above 1.2 volts, then it will stop outputting down here in order to try to bring the voltage down. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking this, which when it's overcurrent is going to put out a positive voltage up here. We'll drive this pin above 1.2 volts. We'll shut off the output. Now one handy little trick before we take down the whiteboard and show the circuit is if we want an indicator that shows when we're over voltage we can take this diode and make it an LED. Um, it's not perfect because some voltage will come through here and produce some current in the LED but not quite enough to light it but still enough to cause the uh, the voltage regulator to shut down, but it is good enough to tell you once you're way over current, it will light up and say you're way over current limit. So the final thing I added on the circuit is over here, I need uh, some, some voltage for the op amp. It needs a, a supply pin and we need this reference for the uh, potentiometer. So what I did is uh, rather than throw in another regulator, um, we can't use this output because we're currently limiting it. This is all uh, unregulated so it's not really suitable. So rather than adding another regulator, what I did is I brought this voltage down through a resistor, a Zener diode, and a capacitor. This gives us a Zener shunt regulator which gives us uh, 12 volts, um, which we can use to run our op amp. It's only good for maybe a few tens of uh, milliamps before it gets weird, but it's enough to run the op amp and the LED. Okay, one final correction to the schematic is we don't actually want to sense our voltage there. We actually want to sense it here. So what that allowed us to do is to account for this one ohm resistor into the feedback circuit. So when it was connected to here, there would actually be a little bit of a voltage drop and we would end up with slightly less volts than we wanted. Uh, now that it's connected here, we are getting the exact volts that we want at the output part. So here's the printed circuit board that I made. So, right here, this is the LM2576 regulator. Here is the inductor. I used a 100 microhenry inductor. Here is the large diode that's connected to the inductor as part of the, uh, the switching circuit. Uh, rather than using a single uh, 1 ohm resistor, I put uh, 10, 10 ohm resistors in parallel. That gives us the uh, same resistance, uh, 10 10 tens in parallel is equal to 1, but uh, we get the additional current carrying capacity of uh, having 10 of them. It's easier to get 10 tens than it is to get one, uh, 1 ohm that's, you know, 10 watts. So I learned that trick from uh, EEV blog in their, uh, their current, uh, 
their adjustable current load video that they produced. Um, over here is the uh, TLC 272 op amp. It's got one, two, three, four hundred K resistors. Uh, and you'll note that those are precision resistors. That's very important. If you use just normal tolerance, uh, crappy ones, then you'll get uh, weird, weird outputs. Um, here is our LED. We've got a couple of capacitors. This is the uh, the input filtering capacitor. It's actually uh, too small. I have some bigger ones on order. Uh, this is the output capacitor. Uh, so I can feed this thing with AC instead of DC. I have a bridge rectifier composed of one, two, three, four, one N 4005 diodes. Uh, what else is on here? I threw in a, uh, a three volt uh, Zener diode over here. This is on the, uh, the feedback circuit. I was a little bit worried about that op amp um, sending a lot of voltage out into the feedback, driving the feedback way, way, way above 1.2 volts and then some of that leaking out through the uh, sense resistor out into the output and then the output goes up and all kinds of weird things happen. So that's just a little safety. Uh, for the voltage adjust, I put the voltage adjust in this uh, 10 turn pot. Uh, so my, my plan with this was just to create a, a 5 volt fixed supply with an adjustable current limit so that the voltage adjust is uh, right there on the board. The current adjust is broken out into this 3 pin header. Uh, there's a wire here that comes off the op amp that lets me hook up the uh, digital panel meter. Voltage in is up here and then uh, voltage out is this pair of pins. Uh, there's a pin here that provides some power to run the digital panel meter. It's an unused header there. Regulator to give me a regulated 12 volts to supply the op amp so the op amp is not running off of the, the unregulated voltage up here at the, uh, at the bridge rectifier. And this is the case for the power supply. What it is is a chunk of one and three quarter inch um, aluminum square tubing. I went down to the local metal place and just bought some scrap that they had ended up with about a three foot piece which I cut down to this piece which is about a foot long. Then I took and I machined out some holes in it using my uh, my Sherline milling machine. I cut a hole there for the uh, LED display. Over here I've got a spot for the potentiometer Got a couple spots for banana jacks, spot for a toggle switch, um, a spot for another toggle over here where we can uh, put in a test button to test the current limiter and a spot for an LED. In the back I cut an access panel so we can get the circuit board in or out and then I drilled some mounting holes that match up to, whoops, upside down, that's why it's not working. Some mounting holes that match up to the holes in the circuit board. Uh, measuring power supply ripple. Turn that on. And this is uh, with the current limiter all the way up. I have just some uh, random two ohm resistor that I had laying around. And what we're measuring on the oscilloscope is 140 millivolts peak to peak at 50 kilohertz. Going to turn the current limiter on to limit it to, let's say, about 100 milliamps. And there we're at 150 millivolts peak to peak. I'll bet if we look out further, it's a lot noisier. Yeah, it's kind of kind of ugly with the current limiter on, but it's doesn't seem a whole lot worse than it did 